Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be on the 10 best perfumes in my collection. So of course this is the 10 best perfumes in my opinion. These might be holy grails, they might be current obsessions, they might be the best performance, the best quality, just the 10 best perfumes, ones that I love, ones that I am obsessed with, that I just cannot live without um, from my current collection. So you'll notice I left out quite a few that I still really love that are still favorites. So don't worry, I didn't get rid of them. Um, but these are sort of like my ultimate 10 current favorites of the moment. I will try to link all of them down below for you. And do keep your eyes open and make sure that you are subscribed because I will also be, do be doing another perfume declutter in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm kind of doing a little bit of an overhaul of my collection. I've realized that I have a lot of perfumes that just don't suit me, ones that I'm just not wearing. And also we have to talk about the elephant in the room, which is the Miss Dior reformulation, which I'm very sad about. So I will be talking about that a little bit in today's video as well. And um, just give you my thoughts about where I'm at in general. So if this is your first time on my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Alithia, and on this channel we talk mostly about perfumes. So if that is your thing, please make sure to head on down and hit the subscribe button. Also feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram if you haven't already, where I share a lot of little tidbits of my life that you won't see here on YouTube. And without further ado, let's get started in today's video. Okay guys, so in no particular order, my first one is Parfums de Marly de Lina. Now this is the Eau de Parfum. So this is a little bit of a change compared to some of my previous videos where my top 10 or my top 10 for life would always include de Lina exclusive. And don't get me wrong, I still love de Lina exclusive. That is still on my holy grail perfumes. It's one I could never, I can't imagine myself getting rid of. However, Delina, the original Eau de Parfum, has made its way into my collection. If you've been watching my previous videos, you know this. And this is an absolutely beautiful perfume. And this is one that took me a really long time to get on board with because a year and a half ago, I didn't think that Delina was for me. I thought it was too tart and too sharp and too sour, and it just wasn't my thing. So if you're not familiar with Delina, it has lychee, rhubarb, bergamot, Turkish rose, peony, cashmere, and cedar, Haitian vetiver, and incense. And it is a very fresh, sweet, kind of a tart, very unique, beautiful rose fragrance. It's also quite musky, which I think gives it a sensuality. I find it to be a very sexy perfume, but also a very easy to wear every single day, sort of a signature scent type of perfume. And of course, I do love the bottles of Delina. Something I no longer do in my collection is I I don't keep perfumes around just for the bottle. I don't keep them because of their stature. I don't keep them because everybody says you should have them. I don't keep them if they were a $500 perfume that was gifted to me by a company. I do not keep them. I only keep perfumes if I absolutely love them and will wear them myself. And they also really have to suit me. And I do feel like Delina suits me. I feel like this is a very me perfume. This is a very classy perfume, something that's easy for me to wear, something that I know I will get compliments on and yeah just a beautiful perfume so this is without a doubt one of the highest quality best perfumes in my collection also amazing performance with this one you can just really smell the quality and I have smelt numerous dupes or inspired versions of this perfume and I have to say in my experience inspired versions don't usually hit the nail right on the head there's always a little bit of something missing there's always a 5% 10% difference and that difference makes all the difference for me, I guess. Um, so yeah, from this point going forward in my personal collection, I will only be focusing on um, non-inspired fragrances. So yeah, love this one. This is Delina from Parfum de Marly. And the next one, you guys, of course, you won't be surprised to see this in here. This is an oldie but a goodie, and this is Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb. So I have had this perfume in my collection for a really long time. Not this exact bottle, but this perfume in general. This is a repurchase for me. Um, and this one was my signature scent a few years ago, and I just fell in love with it. It was my favorite perfume. It was one of the best perfumes I'd ever smelt. Of course, it's no longer very relevant. It's no longer new and exciting. It's pretty popular. It's pretty overworn. Yeah, I'm still not tired of it, though, you guys. I I still love this perfume. This is still one of my favorite go-to's if I don't know what to wear, if I want to smell sweet and flirty and feminine and sensual. Really amazing for date nights, but you could also wear this as a signature scent if you wanted to. Um, that's one thing that I'm learning about myself in my collection is I don't wear perfumes often enough to have you know, tons and tons of perfumes because I don't wear a perfume every single day. 
um, if I'm not really doing anything, I don't really wear a perfume every single day. So for me, my perfumes do have to be kind of special to me. They have to stand out to me in some way. They have to be special to me. I already said that. <laughs> they have to They have to really resonate with me and I have to feel amazing in them when I wear them. And I feel amazing when I wear Flower Bomb. Um, so this is a very sweet tea floral fragrance and it's a very distinctive fragrance. If you smell Flower Bomb, you know, you know what it smells like. It's very easy to detect on somebody else. Um, and yeah, my partner loves it on me. It's just a foolproof scent. It's one of those incredible foolproof fragrances that I cannot imagine myself without. So that is Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb. The next one, you guys, is very new to my collection and it is incredible to me that a perfume that is so new has made its way so far up the top of the list of my favorite fragrances. I've already worn this perfume a few times, you guys, and I cannot get enough of it. This is Armani Privé Blue Turquoise. So this is from the Privé collection, the Armani Privé collection, and look at the bottle. The bottle is absolutely stunning. So you guys, this is a salty, woody vanilla fragrance. So the first thing that comes to mind when I tell people about this perfume is Olympia from Paco Rabanne. A lot of people ask me, is this similar to Olympia? No, it really isn't. It's quite a different perfume. I would say Olympia smells very much more designer where this one smells a little bit more niche and a little bit more upscale and sophisticated I guess. This one just has a little bit more of that um, expensive edge, a little bit more of that higher class edge to it. So this perfume you guys, I don't even know how to describe it. I love this perfume. The performance of this is incredible. This lasts forever. When you catch this on yourself, the scent bubble that comes off your skin, it is so incredible. This is one of those perfumes that if you walk by somebody and they catch this on you, you know you are going to smell amazing. So the notes that you have in here are salt, incense, black pepper, ylang ylang, cypriol oil, Indian jasmine, vanilla, moss, and sandalwood. To me, this smells very sort of piney or sprucy almost. It has a bit of a woodiness to it. It definitely has that salt in there. It has a little bit of a tropical feel to it, like just a subtle tropical beachy vibe because of that ylang ylang, because of the salt. And then there's also a lot of vanilla in here. I would say don't blind buy this, but I have had a couple of people buy this blindly based on my recommendation and they have been in love with it. So take that for what you will guys, but I am in love with this perfume. This is easily one of the best, one of the best in my collection. And I think I've told you in former videos that this is probably my best purchase of 2021 so far. Um, I'm just going to take the cap off actually. I just love the bottle as well. I can't get over how beautiful the bottle is. So it almost has like a masculine nature to it. Oh, it's so good. Okay. If you've ever smelt Tom Ford's Oud Mineral. This is kind of similar along those lines of Oud Mineral, except this one I would say is a little bit more feminine. It's got more of a salty quality and it's got more of a vanilla quality. It's just honestly stunning. This smells like the most expensive resort you've ever been on. This smells like a spa. This smells like the beach. This smells like a sensual woman. This is also what I would say is a very sexy perfume. I love this for sort of intimate occasions, dates. You could wear this every single Single day but you guys there is something about this perfume that is so sexy so sensual it's almost too much for me to wear on a day-to-day -day basis or if I was gonna wear this on a day-to-day -day basis I feel like it would have to be on vacation at a really expensive resort the next time I'm on a vacation um, this may very well be my daytime scent for the whole vacation because it just smells so luxurious so expensive so sophisticated very sensual, very posh. It's just, it's such a beautiful perfume that this is truly one of those perfumes that for me does fall under that special occasion category. It is very strong, it does project, it does last forever. So this is not a perfume that you would want to spray tons of and then go out on a date. You're just gonna be, it's just gonna be too much. It's a very, very powerful perfume. This is worth every penny. You get your bang for your buck with this one. Um, really good value for money. And yeah, definitely one of the best perfumes I've purchased probably ever but definitely in 2021 so that is Armani Privé Blue Turquoise 
So the next fragrance, you guys, that I am in love with, and this is definitely one of my favorite perfumes, I think, of all time, very much a me perfume. It's very much a perfume that suits my style and my personality and just the image that I like for myself, the image that I want to have for myself. It suits my clothing. It suits my fashion style. Like everything about this perfume screams me. I love it. So this is Tiffany & Co. Intense. And if you have been watching my channel, you know that I purchased this one way back in the beginning of quarantine in 2020, blindly loved it, dropped the bottle, broke the atomizer, and just kind of dilly-dallied on bringing it back into my collection. But I did finally bring it back about a month ago and I'm so happy I did because I forgot how much I love this perfume. So this is a very um, kind of a sweet, vanillic, benzoin, powdery fragrance for women. There's something about this perfume that I think is very unique. I honestly have never smelled any other designer or niche perfume that smells quite like this one. The bottle is incredible. It looks like a work of art. It looks like a diamond. It looks like a piece of fine jewelry and I just love everything about this perfume. I love that the idea of the bottle is supposed to resemble jewelry. I love that it's a jewelry company. I love um, how romantic it smells. I love how feminine it is. Everything about this just screams beauty to me and elegance and pretty. It's just a pretty perfume. Also, I think pretty sensual. So the notes that you have in here are pear, mandarin leaf, and pink pepper. In the middle, you have iris, rose, and jasmine, and the most prominent of those is the iris. And in the base, you have musk, cashmere, benzoin, vanilla, carrot seed, and amber. And I do believe it's carrot seed. I don't think it's carrot. And I think that that carrot seed is what gives this a very unique spin because there is something different about this perfume. I can't put my finger on it, but if you know, you know, there is something different about this perfume. And it's just very classy, very sophisticated, very elegant, and I honestly love it. This would be a great signature scent idea. This for me is kind of right up there with my Miss Dior. If I could only pick a few daytime signature scents for myself, this would be one of them for sure. This is one I can easily see myself wearing all the time. Very classy. Oh, I just, I just love it so much, you guys. And I always get people ask me, how do you feel about this one compared to the original Eau de Parfum or the um, Sheer? I love this one more than the rest. For me, this is the best of the whole line. I think that the original one is probably a little bit more everyday appropriate because it's not so sweet. This one I think is a little bit more formal maybe and a little bit more special occasion, a little bit more date night worthy. And this one definitely has better performance. So, but I do prefer this one scent profile wise. I do think this is the best out of the whole range. This one I absolutely, absolutely love. So this is the Tiffany Intense. And while we're talking about classy perfumes, perfumes that I absolutely love, perfumes that I feel embody me, signature scents, fragrances that just make me feel amazing, that I could wear all the time, we have to talk about Miss Dior Eau de Parfum. And this is the 2017 version. So many of you guys have probably heard that they are reformulating this perfume yet again, which I'm really disheartened about. The new formulation should be coming out in September, and I have seen nothing but poor reviews about the new one. I haven't seen a whole bunch of videos on it. I'm trying not to be too biased, but I have seen really poor reviews about the new formulation. Apparently the new formulation is not as long lasting. Apparently it is a completely different smelling perfume and really doesn't even smell at all like this one. So that makes me really sad. I'm okay if they want to reformulate a perfume and change a note or two, make it a little bit different, you know, make it better even. But what I have noticed and the trend that it seems to be with reformulations is that new fragrances tend to be nothing more than a shadow of the past, of their former self. The people who used to have Miss Dior Cherie said that that was the best formulation. Then the 2012 formulation came out and people said that that one was the best one compared to this one. And now, of course, we have the 2017, which isn't even quote unquote good enough for a lot of people because they still remember the Miss Dior's of days gone by. And now they're bringing us yet another fragrance, which I think is going to be even poorer quality and not as good as even this one. It really does dishearten me because this is one of my all time favorite fragrances. I have told you guys that this is my favorite daytime scent for women. So this is how much I have left of this current bottle. 
Um, the bottle itself is adorable. I absolutely love the design. I love the bow. Apparently the new formulation is going to have a fabric bow. So the notes that you have in here are pink pepper, blood orange, sweet orange, mandarin orange, calabrian bergamot, and lemon. In the middle you have grass rose, damask rose, and jasmine leaf. And in the base you have patchouli and palisander rosewood. So basically this is a sweet, rosy, patchouli, orangey fragrance. You guys, I just cannot imagine a more perfect perfume. I really cannot. Even though I have other fragrances that I love, even though I have fragrances that are much more expensive and much more exclusive and more unique, this is my favorite. This is my favorite. This beats out everything and they're discontinuing it. <laughs> so I'm very, very disheartened by that. And I want to show you guys, I have not only one 50 ml, not only two, <laughs> but I have three backup bottles of this perfume and I'm tempted to get more because of a couple of reasons. Number one, I know that once this is discontinued and the new formulation comes out, this is going to be very hard to find. I think it will eventually pop up on those discount websites from time to time because discontinued ones usually do. They sort of resurface, but then they disappear again. And also, even if I decide I don't like this one at some point, which I think is highly unlikely, I can always sell these other ones. So I think they're an investment. Eventually, these will be worth a lot of money because people are gonna be on the hunt once people realize that this is such a great thing and I feel like this is the last taste we're going to have of special, beautiful, high quality Miss Dior. I don't know, I just feel like it keeps getting weaker and weaker and less and less special every time they reformulate it. These are gonna be very special. Either I will wear them myself or if I need to, I can eventually sell them which I don't, I can't see myself doing because I just love this perfume. And I've said it before, if I had to get rid of all my other perfumes and only keep one, this would be the one. So I just feel like I can't go wrong having a few backups and I am definitely tempted to actually go buy more backups. So you guys, I won't spend too much more time talking about this perfume, but I absolutely love it. It's sweet, it's feminine, it's sophisticated, it's classy. You can wear it on a date. It makes you smell expensive. This for me is right up there with Chanel perfumes. I think if a woman walks by wearing Miss Dior, she smells good, she smells sweet, she smells sexy, she smells like a woman, and she smells expensive. And I just love it. I think you cannot go wrong. Amazing lasting power. I love smelling this on myself. I have sprayed this in my closet and accidentally got it on my work clothing. And then when I went to work, my work clothing smelled like this. And that was like days after, you know, it just has such good performance. It's very strong. It's an incredible perfume. And I'm just really sad that they are reformulating it. And I'm probably gonna get another backup or two. The next fragrance is going to be a little bit cliche, but I don't care. There's a reason why this perfume is so popular. This is Mon Guerlain from Guerlain. I also have the intense version and I could have actually put either of them in this video because both of them are incredible perfumes. This is definitely one of the best in my collection. Definitely a top 10 for life. Um, one of those perfumes that if I could only whittle down my collection to a few fragrances, this one would be on that list. And I love it. So this is a very feminine, beautiful, relaxing, comforting, um, but still sensual lavender vanilla perfume. There's also bergamot in here. There's iris, there's jasmine sambac, there's coumarin, benzoin, a little bit of licorice. There's some patchouli. And I just love this perfume, you guys. When I first smelt this about... I think it was like six years ago, five or six years ago. I didn't like it. It wasn't my taste. I was a little bit younger and I think I just didn't know what to expect and I was expecting it to be kind of your run-of-the-mill sweet perfume. I was also not as mature then, um, but now coming back to this again uh, about a year and a half ago, I'm just completely in love with it. I don't know what I ever did without it. This is a great perfume to wear from a day-to-day -day basis. This is a great signature scent. You could also wear it for intimate, cuddling, um, cozy occasions with a loved one. And it's just a really beautiful perfume. So I don't have to say too much about this. It's very popular. Everyone has it, it seems, but I love this one. This one and the intense version are ones that I will repurchase 100%. And actually this one is when 100 mil bottle worthy. My eventual dream and goal for my collection is to get my collection down to something like 20, 25 perfumes. That would be ideal for me. If I had 20 or 25 perfumes that I rotated, that I wore all the time, that I loved, um, this would be on that list. And 
at that point I may as well have 100 ml bottles of all of them because I would be using them all. It would just be more economically smart, financially smart to do that. So this one feels like a very small bottle. I'm almost scared to wear some of my perfumes that are 50 mils because I don't want to run out, but if they ever reformulate this one, I'll lose my mind seriously. Like they cannot keep reformulating all the good perfumes. So anyway, this is Mon Guerlain, an absolute gem and I love it. Next on my list, we have one from Chanel because of course I had to have Chanel and I do have quite a few Chanel perfumes, but you guys, I'm trying to whittle my Chanel collection down a little bit and only keep my absolute favorites because I really do want a smaller collection. I don't think I need five or six Chanel perfumes. I think I should just keep, you know, three of my favorites, two or three of my favorites. This one is definitely on that list. Um, and I will talk about declutters in a future video. So this is Gabriel Essence. This is the sweeter, fruitier version of the Gabriel line from Chanel. And if you guys watch my channel, you know that Chanel Chance was my favorite Chanel perfume. I think this one has maybe bumped out Chance or bumped it down a little further on the list only because I feel like this one is a little bit more modern and I just love this perfume so much. I find this one so easy to wear. It's not too strong. It's perfect for me. I still love Chanel Chance. Don't get me wrong, but this is my new favorite Chanel perfume. So this is a citrusy, fruity, floral fragrance. So you have citruses, you have peach, you have pedigree, you have white flowers, you have tuberose, you have ylang ylang, you have orange blossom, you've got musk, vanilla, and sandalwood. This just basically smells like a very sophisticated young woman. Very sophisticated, very fresh, very floral. I always tell people that if you're looking for a perfume that makes you feel very classy, something that makes you feel expensive and put together, but you're a little bit tired of Coco Mademoiselle because everybody seems to wear it and maybe you don't really care for the Chance fragrances, um, especially Chance of Tundra because that one is so popular, so many people have it and maybe you're not a Coco fan or a Chanel number no. 5 fan. This one is one that you must check out because it is a little bit newer to Chanel. It's a little bit more modern. This one actually reminds me a little of Chanel Beige. It's a very happy, just a very happy, classy, fresh, yellow floral fragrance. I just I just absolutely love this perfume, you guys. I cannot get enough of it. I put that little dent in there over one weekend, um, about a month, month and a half ago. I haven't worn it as much lately just because I have so many perfumes and I've been trying so many new perfumes lately, but this is one of my favorites and this is something that really motivates me to have a smaller collection. The fact that, you know, summer has come and gone and I haven't even worn this one as much as I would have liked to because I just had too many other perfumes to be testing. Um, but I love this perfume. This one as well is a 50 ml and look how tiny it is. I mean, it just looks so tiny compared to all of my other perfumes. And this one definitely is 100 ml worthy. This would be on my top 10. This would be, if I had to whittle down my collection, this would definitely be on that list and I would get a 100 ml bottle. So this is Gabriel Essence from Chanel. Absolutely beautiful. The next fragrance that we'll talk about is one that I have raved about so many times. And I would say this is right up there with blue turquoise. Um, in my list of best purchases and this was also a blind purchase So sometimes you guys I buy expensive perfumes blindly and they are complete fails Other times I buy expensive perfumes blindly and they turn out to be incredible This one turned out to be a lifer for me. So I was really glad about that So this is Christian Louboutin Louis Rouge. The bottle you guys is absolutely Phenomenal. I love this bottle. It's just so extra. It's so exorbitant. It's so interesting and so beautiful and it just really speaks to the branding of Christian Louboutin which is just like superior extravagance and luxury and I just love it. So I always like to show people the lid because the lid is amazing. They have the red bottom shoe on the top which I love. It's a very very heavy lid. This bottle itself is very heavy but I think the lid is like half of the heaviness. And then you have the beautiful red bottle itself. This is gorgeous. This is one of my favorite colors. Oh, and this perfume, you guys, this is such a special perfume. This is a vanilla, iris, and cardamom fragrance. So it's powdery, it's a little bit kind of woody, almost like a soft, spicy, but the spiciness that's in here is not crazy in your face or like kitchen cupboard spicy or masculine spicy. This is a very feminine, soft, spicy perfume, and it's also mostly that vanilla and that iris. Oh, and there is something about this that is so sensual, so sexy. Honestly, this perfume for me is very much a special occasion nighttime going out with my partner 
and intimate night type of perfume because there is something about it that makes it, I think, too hot for daytime. Like it's just such a sexy perfume. And when I look at my sort of date night perfume arsenal, this one just sticks out to me. This one is just at the top of the list. Um, it's incredible. My boyfriend absolutely loves it. Um, so I think it's a great one to have for date nights. It's a great one to have for formal occasions. And when I go on vacation next and I'm looking for that sexy nighttime perfume, this is hands down, hands down, the one that I will be bringing with me. And also this one has really good performance. So it is worth the price. It's quite expensive, but you do get a 100 ml bottle and it is worth the price. It's very unique. It's very beautiful and it has good lasting power and yeah just a beautiful beautiful perfume so that is Christian Louboutin Luby Rouge and the second last perfume that we're going to talk about today is Zerjoff Lyra now this is a very kind of a popular well-known perfume in the perfume community I don't think it's that well known to people who aren't super into perfumes or who aren't into niche because until I really started getting into perfumes and watching videos and doing some exploring, I had never heard of this before, which I think is a real shame, but it's kind of a good thing because it makes it more exclusive <laughs> for those of us who have it. So this is um, Zerjoff Lyra, and this is one of the few truly gourmand perfumes that I still have in my collection. What I have learned is that although I love the smell of a gourmand and I love the smell of a straight up vanilla type of perfume, I don't actually enjoy wearing a lot of straight up gourmand perfumes. There has to be something in there that's a little bit different, a little bit special, um, maybe some floral notes or something. I don't like just smelling like a cupcake. In other words, I have to smell a little bit feminine or a little bit sultry or a little bit something like there has to be something to it and this perfume for me is really amazing because I think this combines the best of both worlds you have a lot of super gourmand kind of citrusy qualities in here and that vanilla and that caramel but it's also nicely balanced with jasmine musk and lavender so this perfume does have a note of lavender in the opening I don't hear a lot of people talking about the lavender in this perfume a lot of people describe this fragrance as a lemon cookie or a bakery or something like that and to be honest you guys I don't really get lemon cookie lemon bakery I don't really get that what this reminds me of is it's just imagine Mon Guerlain gourmand version gourmand version with caramel with citruses to me this is a feminine sensual enveloping gourmand fragrance it's also one of the most comforting fragrances I have. I think it's great for intimate nights, cuddling. I think it's good for winter, fall, days. I wouldn't wear this in the summertime really, although I think you could get away with it. Um, but for me, this is just such a cuddly, cozy, comforting fragrance and I just love wearing it in the evening. The lasting power is amazing. The scent profile is amazing. and. I know that I smell good enough to eat, but I also still smell feminine and mature. So it's not like it's not like a basic gourmand perfume. It's probably, I think, the king of gourmand perfumes. It's beautiful. I just love it, you guys. Let me take the lid off here. Oh, you guys, this is so beautiful. There was a time when I said I didn't think I needed this perfume. There was a time when I said this was overhyped or that, you know, everybody else seemed to love it and I didn't really like it. I had to take my time with this one. I had a sample and I just kept coming back to it and smelling it. And eventually I decided to just splurge and get a full bottle. And it wasn't even honestly until I got the full bottle and started properly wearing it that I really developed an appreciation for this perfume. This one has kicked out other gourmands from my collection, like Love and Crime from Exidolo. I did let go of that perfume in favor of this one because I just enjoy wearing this one a little bit more. Not much else to say. This is, like I say, one of the last remaining gourmands in my collection. I think it's like the king of gourmands. I think you don't need 100 gourmands because especially for the amount of times you're gonna wear them, if you like to wear other fragrances that are more daytime appropriate, that are more signature scent worthy, I feel like you just need a good gourmand once in a while. You know what I mean? Or at least that's me. That's how I feel about it. So love this perfume. Incredible. Worth every penny. Um, and yeah, that's Zerjoff Lyra. Okay, and the last one on today's list, but certainly not least, is Love by Killian Don't Be Shy Extreme. So if you guys watch my channel, you probably know that I used to have the original Love Don't Be Shy, and I did let that one go because that one I felt was almost a little too sweet for me. It was almost a little too bubblegummy. That one really reminded me of those, um, I think they're called bazooka bubble gums, those pink bubble gums, maybe I'm wrong, but pink bubble gums that were very sweet. It was a very... Um, bubblegummy sweet 
floral fragrance. This one for me is a little bit more elevated, a little bit more toned down, but in a good way. This one smells like marshmallows on a bed of white flowers and rose. If you can imagine turning a bouquet of flowers into powdered marshmallows, that's what this one smells like. So first I'll give you a bit of a close-up of the bottle. Love the Killian bottles. I've had a few Killian fragrances in my collection in the past, and this is the only one that is currently still here. Um, and like I say, I have so many perfumes and I have so many perfumes that I love. I don't think I need, you know, three or four or five Killian perfumes. I'm not one of those people who wants to collect perfumes. I don't want to collect Killian perfumes. For me, I feel like I just need one Killian perfume that I love, and this is that perfume. Oh, it's addictive, it's sweet. It still does have a little bit of that kind of bubblegum sweetness to it. I believe that there is neroli and I think maybe orange blossom in this perfume. There's rose, there's marshmallow. Um, it's just a sweet, delicious, delectable fragrance with good lasting power that will get you compliments and that will make you smell incredible. This one I would reserve, again, specifically for special occasions. I only have a few perfumes that I really like to reserve for special occasions, but this is one of them because it's just too special to me and it's too rich and too it's too good to be worn on an everyday basis. And to me, it just is very sexy and it doesn't smell like a perfume I would wanna to wear to the gym or the grocery store or for brunch or anything like that. This is definitely a head turner, nighttime, nice dress, smell amazing for your loved one perfume or smell amazing for yourself smell amazing to go out for yourself right um but yeah that is killian love don't be shy extreme i do like this one better than the original um just a beautiful fragrance so you guys that is it for my 10 best or top 10 or 10 favorite perfumes in my collection whatever you want to call it of course there are a few that i left out of here that i also absolutely love like alien for mugler which is still a top favorite delina exclusive which is still a top favorite um i did leave out some of my favorite perfumes but it's very hard to choose just 10 that are the best out of all of them but these are definitely i think some of the best and i think i have a pretty good mix in here in terms of everyday perfumes, very every, everyday wearable perfumes, signature scent, um, but also special occasion perfumes. I think out of this tray, the most special occasion for me would definitely be the Luby Rouge. I think the Blue Turquoise um, and the Killian Love Don't Be Shy Extreme and maybe Lyra, that's like not something I would wear every single day. But the other ones I think you could safely get away with wearing quite often, especially the Gabrielle from Chanel. That could be definitely a signature scent everyday perfume. Delina could definitely be an everyday perfume. Miss Dior could definitely be an everyday perfume. And then I think Victor and Rolf, Mongerlan and Tiffany kind of maybe go more in that like, I wanna smell a little bit extra beautiful sensual whatever for me anyways so that is my um top 10 and you guys there will be a declutter coming i am going to do another perfume declutter i wasn't going to because i didn't want to stress people out and i didn't want people to think i had gone crazy or was getting rid of perfumes that were so good or whatever but something i'm realizing you guys is if you have those perfumes that make you smell so good and you want to smell like that all the time and perfumes have a shelf life, they do go bad. Um, my Miss Dior Eau de Parfum, for example, this one is about two years old. The juice is starting to turn a little bit dark and it still smells good, but it smells like in a six months to a year, it's going to start smelling not so good, if you know what I mean. Like this perfume is not going to last forever and I think it's a real shame that I only wear this you know, like once every five or six weeks. And the reason for that is because I have so many perfumes. I just think that's a real shame. I do not want a huge collection. And the fact that they have reformulated this one and that I know that they don't last forever and they do have a shelf life, that's really kind of influenced where I'm at with my perfume collection. And it's really made me rethink what I'm doing. I don't wanna be sort of all over the place with my perfumes. I wanna have a very kind of well curated, smaller, more concise collection that suits me. Of course, I am going to be going shopping. Um, I will always discover new perfumes. New perfumes will always make their way into my collection. 
and some perfumes will kick out other perfumes. That's just the way it goes. But yeah, I think that some of these ones, you know, have been around for a really long time. My Victor and Rolf, my Miss Dior, my Tiffany, my Mon Guerlain. Um, those are fragrances that I've had for a really long time and plan to continue to repurchase. And I think there will always be those sort of holy grail perfumes that continually come back. And um, anyway, that's where I'm at. So keep your eyes open for a declutter. There will be a declutter coming out in the next little while as well. And I think you will be surprised <laughs> at some of the ones that I'm letting go of, but I hope that you enjoyed today's video. And by the way, you guys, I will try to link to where you can get a 2017 Miss Dior. I will try to link it, but do your own research, please, because I know some stores have already rolled out the new fragrances and I would hate for you to get stuck with a new one when you meant to buy the old one. Um, so definitely do checking around. I will try to link it, but definitely check around make sure that you're getting the 2017. I know that they are on clearance. Um, at my local stores right now. These are actually on clearance. Um, so I think literally within a week, we're not going to be able to find these at department stores anymore. So I don't know. It's kind of sad, but, um, yeah, so I will link this, but please do your own research before you use the link to make sure that it is the old bottle. So you guys, that is it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these fragrances. Please let me know down below what some of your top 10 fragrances are. Also, let me know if you've tried the new Miss Dior, what you think about it. And I will see you guys all very soon in my next video. Bye for now.